It's story time. Today we will begin the Ice Princess story. Mm. Chapter 1. Skating on the Edge Alice Banks and Samantha Stevens sat on the floor just inside the tunnel that led down onto a he- the huge expanse of ice. This was where they always sat so they could see the other catchers, but the crowd couldn't see them. Alex was watching with reluctant admiration as Carla Zephray and Wei Jennings. Jennings went smoothly into the last part of their free dance. Samantha was leaning back against the wall, her eyes closed. She hugged herself and shivered. I wish they get a move on. She said, any minute now, said Alex. Both of them knew they had no chance of winning this competition, not against Kak and Wei. They were just ahead of Alex and Samantha and had already qualified for the British Championships. Samantha shivered again. You are right, Alex said, noticing for the first time. Of course, she snapped. A very very much made Alex study her more slowly. He leaned forward and felt her forehead. Hey, you're burning up, he said. She nodded his hand away. I said I'm alright. It's just this waiting. You're not alright, said Alex. Getting to his feet. No, I better fetch this. You won. We on in a sec, she said. It's just a bit of a chill. That's all. You know what your parents made me promise, Alex says. Look, if you're not up to it, we have to withdraw. Don't be shock a whim. I haven't come all this way to drop out of the last minute. Sam, Alex said, looking concerned. There's plenty of other competitions. Samantha, not Sam, she said crossly. Then the PA system in the ring broke into voice. That's it. You can stay here if you want. I'm going. She scrambled to her feet and shot up to the ice. Frantically, Alex dashed after her, only getting up halfway towards their starting positions. A great bellow bello from the Sinai's told them that Toby, Alex's best friend, was in rare form. Then the, the MC was reading out their limbs again. They were both dressed in Indian costumes for their free dance apart. Alex as a chip, Samantha as a squirrel. They had been aiming for a second place, but now all Alex was thinking was, could they hold the dance together? Because there was definitely something wrong with Samantha. The drumbeats for their music started and immediately Samantha's 10 years of dance training took over. Her tremendous self discipline pushing her protesting body into keeping up with her music. A brief occupied Alex were half a step behind, but by the time they had gone around the ice, they were reasonably together. The music hurried fast and Alex settled down, but even so, their performance lacked their usual arm. They failed to grip the audience. When at last they sang to get their leads in the dramatic ending, where they entreated the sun to return, Alex was fe- feeling disgusted with himself. He took Samantha's arm and steered her over to the barriers. She leaned against them until their masks came up. We'd be lucky to hold on the turn. Alex grabs quietly to Samantha. She wasn't even watching. What? She said vaguely. Samantha, you look awful. She said. I'll get this. No. I just need to sit down for a minute. She said. Your parents are over there. You go and sit with them. No. That's the last thing I can do. They mustn't see me like this. She said. Get me back to the end room. And it's hard carried her up to the tunnel, and the minute she was in the end room, she lay down 
on the bed and closed her eyes. I really think I ought to fetch someone, he said in a worried voice. Fine, you just go and get them. Let them see me like this and guess how long my dad will let me go on sketching, she said. Oh, it's just a cold, Alice. You know how they affect me. If I can get through the hour's ceremony and into some warm clothes, I'll be all right. I can pretend to sleep in the car so they won't notice. Alec knew that what he said was true. Samantha was the fittest person he had ever met, but closed her like a sledgehammer. Only two years ago, her parents had taken her out of dance college after a near-fatal attack of rheumatic fever. He covered her with his anal wrap and fetched some hot chocolate from the machine in the corridor. But she didn't want it. Just lay there shivering. A nest urged on by the PA system. They were made their way back onto the ice. A small podium had been set up on the ice with places for first, second, and third. Nobody seemed sure who had come second and third, and they were taking a long time getting around to announcing it. At long last, the MC came forward, trailing a microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, he said. Then again, ladies and gentlemen, until the crowd quieted down. In third place are Alex Barnes and Samantha Stevens. Alex swore and read for Samantha's hand. She leaned against the tunnel wall, her eyes closed. Samantha, he said. Oh, oh, yes, right. She took his arm and he almost had to drag her across the ice. To Samantha, the whole ring was enormous, echoing hope. The only reality was the familiar feel of Alice's hand on her arm, dimly, as though from a very great distance away. She could see the empty podium. Empty? This man meant they were in the third, third place. What had happened? Surely they had planned on coming in second. Alex halted her by the lowest position. Just there, kissed, says the um, see. His kind voice talking the single of their disappointment. Ah, Samantha looked at him. Really? Up there, my dear. Oh, yes. Samantha gave him a beautiful smile and collapsed onto the ice as if all the bones had been suddenly removed from her body. Alex was left there alone, alone staring down at her. Chapter 2. Black Eyes Alex sat in the hospital waiting area, reading the posters on the wall. The door swung open and Toby came back from the cafeteria, carrying a tray. He sat down beside Alex and handed him a plastic cup of hot chocolate. Are you sure that's all you want? Toby asked, starting on a huge slice of lemon mandarin pie. Yes, thanks, said Alex. He nodded towards one of the posters. Have you seen that one? About the dangers of chalk cholesterol. Cholesterol? said Toby. I thought that was an island in the Mediterranean. Alex didn't laugh, just took a more little sip of his drink. Toby watched him anxiously. Oh, come on, Alex, said Toby. You said yourself it was on your coal. Yeah, well, a coast nothing to worry about, is it? They brought her here in an ambulance in case you got forgotten, suddenly, with the lights flashing and the sudden ring. Ah, that was just a precaution, says Toby. Have some of this lemon meringue pie cheer yourself up. No, thank you. So missing something, considering the other garbage that cafeteria is selling, they do an amazingly good lemon meringue pie. I tried to stop her. Toby, said Alex, we really had a fire in the tunnel. You couldn't stop Samantha with a bulldozer? Dozer, said Toby. I only hope her parents realize that. 
said Alice. Well, here's your chance to find out, said Toby as the door swung open again. Alice, who had already seen Mr. and Miss Stevens scramble to his feet. I'll be right behind you, muttered Toby, and I'll to be being right behind you. I'll see you in the car park. He abandoned his name and and disappeared through the glass doors. Alice hardly noticed him go in his eagerness to speak to Samantha's parents. How is she? He asked. She's all right, Alice, said Miss Stevens. It was a false alarm, just a start of flu. Alex went out alongside a Rennes. Yes, no thanks to you, snapped Mr. Stevens. That's hardly fair, don't know, said Miss Stevens. It's not Alex's fault. Isn't it? demanded Mr. Stevens. Tell me, Alex, did you know she was ill before she went on the ice? Yes, sir. Mr. Stevens turned to look at his wife. Certified, he said. She sighed. Alex, you promised to let us know if Samantha showed the least star you missed. She said, you know how dangerous even the slightest show can be to her. Alex was silent. He could only defend himself by putting the blame on Samantha. Well, you had a chance, Alex. You're going to stay away from my daughter from now on, said Mr. Devens. She my parlor, Alex said quietly. Not anymore. She's no very spider anymore, said Mr. Stevens. Then to his wife, Come on, Victoria, let's go home. Yes, you go and get a car, Dulles. She said, I'll be right with you. Mr. Stevens gave an angry shrug but disappeared through the glass doors. Miss Stevens waited until he had gone, then turned back to Alex, a more friendly look on her face. You're going to have to do as he says, Alice, she said. I'm sorry, but we really can't let her skate anymore. You'll soon find another partner. Do you think it's that easy? She took her head. We are going to have to make sacrifices. Samantha, more than any, any of us, I need to see her. She's asleep. The Lord has just given her a set dirty says Miss Stevens. He says he, she will sleep solidly for at least eight hours. Perhaps you can come in with me tomorrow if her father is not there. That it. She's going to be all right though, isn't she? Miss Stevens? Yes, Alex. Later. Miss Stevens went out the glass doors after her husband. She was replaced almost immediately by Toby. He went over to his friend's who was leaning against the wall, looking upset. Were they mad? To be asked. Not really. I shocked. That's nice people, Toby. It's Samantha's fault, not theirs, and not and mine. How is she? Asleep, I shrunted. Oh, is she going to be all right? Come on. If we miss the last but bus, it's a three-mile walk. No, you go. Toby, I got to hang around a bit. If you're waiting, I'll stay and keep you company. Thanks, but I need you to drop me in and explain to my parents. If I phone them, they're only demand I came home. Okay, says Toby, relieved. How long shall I say you're going to be? Alex struck, as long as it takes, he said.